Hello, I'm Gina, and I'm here to tell you what's under my needle this month. I'm going to update you on what I've been working on for the month of February, my WIPGO updates, and what's in the future for March stitching. I'm also going to introduce you to my Count It Cross stitch journey. I know, I needed one more thing to stitch, and for some crazy reason, I'm counting little X's. Yay! So, um, first let me say thank you for joining me. Uh, if you want to be notified, you know how this thing works with YouTube. You hit the subscribe button and the notification. And if you like what you see, click the like button. If you don't like what you, what you see, just move along. I'm very emotional. I don't think I would like a thumbs down. I might cry. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I've got tough skin. But listen. This is just me visiting with you and hopefully giving you some inspiration for things that you might want to try stitching or that you already do stitch. Just, um, just some company for today. So uh, I figure I'll show you what I had to work on for my February WIPGO. I had to work on a project that I had started by uh, Judy Niemeyer of Quiltworks. If you're not familiar and she does um, paper piecing and I think she does it very well I really thoroughly enjoy her approach to paper piecing um, it's not the paper piecing you think of when you say swear words it's the kind that you really can do and that you really can enjoy so you might want to check her out one of these days so I had to work on my quilt called um, What's it called? Art Deco? Yeah, here it is. Art Deco Sawtooth Double Wedding Ring. I love the modern look. I love double wedding ring quilts. They're one of my favorites. And so all I had done when I started um, my whip go for February with this piece was all I had done was the little, um, little sawtooth melons. And I had everything cut. So at Socation, if you haven't heard me talk about Socation, you can go back and see it on a few other videos, but I'll tell you real quick right now. It's a sewing vacation. And we go up to the local hotel from Friday morning at 10 a.m. and we don't leave till Sunday at 3. And stitch away. So I had a design wall up behind where I was sitting because this is the kind of project you have to lay it all out. You have to Place all the colors where they belong. You have to pick it up, stitch it, put it right back, or you'll be doing a lot of ripping. And that comes under the advice of Judy on how to assemble this quilt. So I'm gonna to listen to the professionals. And so, I of course don't have a wide enough shot to show you, but I was able to get quite a few of the rows put together. Let me just get that out of the way. I have two rows left to do. And so here's a bit of it. It's very hard to see on such a small little area, but I have a tiny house. Not a tiny house, tiny house, but a tiny house. So anyway, I, I really love the colors. It's so striking when you're able to put it up on a design wall and step back. Uh, the colors just ooh, make you enjoy what you're seeing and get you through it's tedious piecing uh because it's not because it's curve piecing but because you can't go fast and straight so each curved section is stitched then you skip the other area and you st stitch in the opposite direction bottom line is it takes some time but i feel really good about it now the next time this is on my whip go board will be to finish putting the rows together and prepare it for quilting. And when I say that, I mean, get the backing fabric stitched up, plan what it's gonna be, whatever, and put it in the bucket, the to be quilted bucket, which is quite big and quite full. And you know what, it's okay. I'm just gonna move this project from this bucket to the other bucket, It'll be great. Uh, I no longer have a long arm machine. And so there's a sticking point. Um, I'm not going to push it through my domestic machine. I just don't have the, I don't. So one of these days I'll get another long arm when I have more space. 
right now the kids are more important so they take up the space um we went to new jersey uh for the february break now i'm from new jersey i live in massachusetts for about 25 years but when i go anywhere people say where are you from i say new jersey and they're like oh you're a long way from home I'm like oh yeah no i'm i live in massachusetts but i'm from new jersey and so we went back uh, to Jersey for a stay with my son. He has some space for us to stay and visit. And this time all the grandkids went and my son went. So he had some vacation, use or lose vacation time. Anyway, uh, we went down and I came back without any allergies. Yay! Uh, I guess I'm just building back, you know, the tolerance for the pine trees and things like that. So I was very relieved. I usually, when I go down, I'm allergy and the lousy and the ill so it was nice um and so that was what they call the february winter vacation break now i don't get why on earth kids would need a week off in february um the locals tell me because it's sort of for skiing okay that's fine it just um if you don't ski there's not anything to do and everybody just stays cooped up in the house so we decided to take a little trip. All right, so that was my Art Deco, and that was one of my whip goes for February. And my other whip go for February was my If the Hat Fits. If the Hat Fits is a wool applique block of the month. Um, now, I joined this block of the month the way it works. This is um, out of the Quilted Crow in Bolton, Massachusetts. They have a lot of block of the month programs and they're very, very nice, beautiful selections and choices and something for everybody from, you know, piecing to wool and so on. And so it was already, you, you could just join in anytime. You can get them sent to you month by month. You can buy them all at once, whatever it is you want to do. And so a couple of friends and I, influenced by one of the other friends, it wasn't my choice, but I sure did love it when I saw it. And we are making, let's see, I should have probably queued up the picture to show you. But anyway, I will find it real quick. But it is a wool applique wool hanging. Everything in the block of the month is included each month except for your threads. I don't have the full picture. Why is that? Yeah. Hold on, I think I have it. No, also on, no. All right, well. I'll show you what I did. I had um, six blocks left to do. So I already made three. And so I had to do three. So I did that little guy right there. I don't follow directions. Uh, when it comes to wool, it's I look at the picture and then I make it my own, do my own thing. And I have lots and lots of buttons from owning my previous company, Grab and Go Kits, and I have the little spiders and bats, and darn if I'm not gonna use them. So I buttoned it up. And here is another a little pumpkin. Cute. Now, you know, there's so many cute little buttons, and if they're shank buttons, which most of them, that these two color or three color buttons are shank buttons, just get yourself a little thing that cuts, you know, from the garage. Cut the little shank off and you glue it. That's all. Yay, looks cute. And the third one is right here. And so this, I picked some simpler ones. Now the reason, let me just say this. When we went to New Jersey, I could have brought this stitching with me, but it would take up a lot of space in the car I would have to bring a lot of different threads. I felt like my creativity might be held back because all my stuff would be here. So like the buttons and the things and, and I said, you know, I, it's just not the right thing to bring. And so I brought a different project that I'll show you in a little bit. But what that meant was when I came back from vacation week and did all the unpack this, you know, get settled back in, um, I had three days left in February to do my three blocks. I stitched nonstop 
for those three days. I mean, I cooked dinner, I did the things, I did the stuff, but all of my stitching was focused on getting those three blocks done. I'm glad. I'm glad that I did whip go. I'm glad that I'm still doing it. Um, I feel like um, it's going to get me to the finish line on these projects. And once I am assigned that for the month and I work on that project, I put it away and I feel very free. I feel free to do new things. And that's what it's all about because at the end of the year, these babies are going to be done. And that's, that's very cool for me. So next time this gets called I have two more blocks to do two more block hats hats blocks of hats <laughs> and um and the bottom border which I'm counting as a block it's a bottom border it says if the hat fits and that goes on the bottom and the nine blocks are arranged on the top for a very cute little wall hanging and I like to decorate for Halloween speaking of decorations I changed my quilt for you as you could see Going with the purple thing because spring's coming in March. No matter what the weather says, outside right now I'm looking at snow. Not pretty snow either. Old snow, dirty snow, trampled snow. Um, it's not melting yet, but when it does, this is officially called mud season. They call the spring in other places. Here, mud. That's all we have, mud. Because everything is defrosting. Anyway, that's that. Uh, so on my quilt hanging this month. Uh, this was a kit from years ago, years, years ago, where the watercolor style was in and, you know, the piecing. There you go. So but what I did with my border, because um, I was doing this for teaching par purposes, and if you can use one sample to teach multiple things, well, you know, that's a good thing. And so I taught stuffed applique. And so that's the flowers and all that that you see around there. And the quilt behind me here on the sofa is one of Debbie Brown's color blocks. I don't remember which month. Uh, I changed my setting a little bit and I went with my grays and blacks of, for color blocks and um, I put my little ringer in there. Oops, I can't, oh, okay, just turn my head. <laughs> that little guy right there. And that inspired all the other colors and this beautiful cave border just pretty, springy, purpley. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so that was Whipco update for February. I'll just put that away. I always like to come home with a story. Well, come to you with a story. When we went to New Jersey, it also coordinated with the loss of one of my very sweet dear aunts to me. I know I say aunt, I could say aunt. But my Aunt Laura, um, she had a beautiful, wonderful, long life, and it was just time for her to go. And so um, it just so happens we were there for, you know, the services. And uh, my daughter-in-law, of course, she came with little EJ. And so that's uh, Evan James, EJ. He is seven. He's number um, maybe 11. He's one of the two younger kids, grandkids, we have 13. So my daughter-in-law tells me a little bit later that uh, when they first came in to the funeral home for the visiting, um, she stopped by to say hello to a couple of my sisters that were standing there. And so um, Evan says, you know, my, my one of my sisters says to Evan, oh, it's nice to meet you. And he says, he looks at her and goes, what? I slept at your house. And she looks at him like, what? And my daughter-in-law goes, EJ, that's not grandma. That's her sister, Kathy. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. <laughs> this is the same kid who um, years ago, he was probably three. Um, unfortunately, his other grandma had passed away. And my son said to him on the phone, we were doing FaceTime and he says, EJ, come on over here and say hi to grandma. And I hear out in the distance, I hear him say, she's dead. And I thought, oh my God, that child, he's so dang adorable. But I also felt heartbroken that he had to have that at a three years old, he had to lose his other grandma. Those are my stories for this video. You're welcome. I just love my grandkids and they're part of my life and 
okay, bring me joy and keep me going. All right, back to stitching. So my upcoming two whip goes for March, I will start working on at Socation, which is tomorrow. Now I'm filming this on Thursday. Did I say it was Thursday, March 8th? Well, it is. Uh, and so March 9, 10, 11, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday is our Socation. And I'm going to be working on, on one of, I'll be focusing on one of my monthly pulls. So this is a picture of the setting for a block of the month that I did through Sue Spargo by the designer Jen Kingwell. And this is her quilt called Bowie Star. The lady loves templates, templates. And, um, it's hand piece. Well, I chose to do mine hand pieced. So all of my blocks are pieced by hand. However, I don't care for this setting. Um, I love the fabrics that Sue Spargo sent. Oh, I love when other people pick my fabric. It's kind of fun as long as they know my style, you know. Um, and so I have been stitching away on these blocks. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Time just, you know, flows together. I have this many. That's a number, you know. Ask any little child to tell you. I have this many diamond blocks stitched. And so they're all uh, hand pieced, which I love hand sewing, especially with the limited space and need, needing to have a flexible schedule with, with kids and and all that, so um, I like doing the hand piecing. However, all of these diamonds, I wanna put in a setting that has one row of diamonds coming this way and an alternate row of something. Now, it was supposed to be these other embroidered bits, and I, I, did, pra I did care for it. I did a practice one, I didn't like it. So, my plan is, so I have all of these white diamonds cut out and I'm not going to be doing that other process. So I thought I would do circles of all the scrap fabrics because I have a lot of scraps because we were supposed to be doing this other setting with all these scrap fabrics cut into smaller diamonds. So I, I prepped all of these, um, you know, because there's one thing about me as I'm organized and I plan ahead and I, so I prepped them all, meaning, because it's like a linen and we had to put some stabilizer on the back and then do the embroidery. What I decided was, and I will try this out at Socation, but I'm pretty sure in my mind, in my quilting mind, that I will like it. So what I'm going to do is cut out diamonds. Um, I have a template from one of the months we had a smaller diamond in the middle. I can't grab it for you now. So what I'm gonna do is gonna, I bought more white fabric, by the way. When I was out in Ohio visiting my friend, uh, we went out to see Sue Spargo's place, of course. And I asked to get a few yards of the, the fabric. So they had it and I have, it, I have fabric, so we're good. Um, um, my plan is, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna work, I'm gonna cut the diamonds out of all the scraps using the little template and rotary cut them. I am not going to hand piece, it's just not necessary. I'm gonna take those diamonds, I'm going to cut white strips. I don't know the width, I'm gonna have to figure that all out. And I'm gonna sew them on each side of the diamond and on the other side and then trim it down to make sure it fits. And that'll be the alternate setting, that alternate row between the colored diamonds. And what I think that's really gonna do is use my scraps and use more color where the white is. And it's also going to put a breaker of white around the colors that are also going to be touching all the other diamonds that are very colorful. I think it's gonna work. I'll let you know because I'll be working on that this weekend. And um, I look forward to seeing it because, you know, I have this vision and I think it's gonna work really nicely. So that's that. So those are my WIPCO updates and my future plans for WIPCO. Next, I wanted to show you what I did stitch while I was in New Jersey. I'm participating in um, pinwheels.com, Maria, is doing a hexi, hexi, sew along. It's a sow, stitch along, I'm sorry, stitch along. And she is using three quarter inch hexis. 
and the template, the, the, the product that um, piqued my curiosity to use to do this stitch along, because believe me, I do not need to sew any more other little hand stitch hexagons, but I couldn't resist because we're going to be using this new, um, instead of cardboard pieces for the hexagon shapes, they're a plastic, a template plastic, flexible, and uh, they're out of Hungary. Um, and they're manufactured there. But look at those little cute little hexagons. Isn't that nice? Well, anyway, so Maria Tomoka of Pinwheels is a Daiwa bow distributor, which is a Japanese fabric. It has a very unique style, a very unique look. Normally, I do brights and all that, but it is something just really beautiful about these fabrics. And you look at them and you think, what do I do? I, I don't really know what to do with it. And I've looked at them for years and I've never really sewn anything with them. And this was a perfect opportunity to try something new with English paper piecing and use some of the Japanese fabrics. So each month for 10 months, we're going to be doing this sell and we get fabric and plastic templates to make three of these a month per month. There's one, two, I'm here to tell you, I kept up the first month, mostly because I was tra trapped in New Jersey with only one project, but I was really very focused on wanting to try to keep up, just try to keep up. Um, and so we are approaching the next shipment should be coming, um, I think it's like the 25th of each month uh, that they come out. So um, I kept up on the first month, yay. And so I'll get more fabric and more little plastic bits to, um, to do the next month's work. So that's what I did. And I really did enjoy it, but I have to tell you what, um, your fingers start to hurt a little bit after you pull that needle so much. Uh, and I found this one needle in my pincushion, which means I have no idea what needle it is. So I've been trying to find it everywhere I can see needles. Um, I first started off with a straw needle, which I usually use a very thin needle for my needle turn applique, my hand sewing and all that. Well, what was happening is, I, you know, you tie a knot at the end with your threads. You don't just put the thread through, so you tie the knot. I'll explain it all later. I'll give you a little demo, I guess, or something. But, um, because the needle was so thin and the eye of the needle was so sh sort of, tiny and small and whatever. My thread would kept breaking. It was shredding my thread. So the eye on this other needle out of my pincushion um, had a small enough eye so that when I took my stitch, I wasn't pushing the fabric out. I mean, the needle was going through the fabric instead of pushing the fabric. And I was able to tie the thread on. I was able to stitch with such joy. Um, it went pretty quick. Uh, it was a little, like I said, a little much on the fingers, but not really when you consider so many other things like wool is a little more difficult because you pull harder. So, um, but I think it was just because I did hour after hour and day after day. Bingo, done. I forgot to tell you my other WIPCO for March. I just saw it sit next to me um, because there's two things on the WIPCO board. So the first one was the Jen Kingwell Bowie Star. And then the other is two more blocks from Dancing chickens, flying pigs. Now, I don't, I don't want to do it. I don't want to. The first month of WIPCO, the two numbers that were pulled, one number was to do two blocks. The other number was to do two blocks. In January, I did four. If you look at an earlier video. And I did it. I made it. I did four. Four but now I only have to do two and I'm still being cranky about it. I'll be happy when it's done. So these are the two that I am going to do next. A little bit of glare, but you know, if you can see them. So this is cute with the chair. Now I have the wool cut out for that and I have the chair on the background. And this one, I have nothing prepped yet, but at least that's where I left off. I had just really just prepped it a little. Uh, so uh, I have to work on these, but I won't be doing this at location. This is something I like to do 
Um, like when I'm at home, my schedule is do the morning stuff, duh, duh. Um, stitch for a few hours, maybe break for lunch, maybe go to the gym, whatever it's going to be. Um, and so in other words, I'm able to go in and stitch for a little while, go do other stuff, go back in and stitch. So it's not like hours in a row. And it makes it easier for me to do a lot of this, this work. So that's how I'm going to get through it. Like I said, in the end, I will be happy it's done, but I'm going to moan a little because I can. Let's see. Oh, I'll update you on my Christmas club. I mentioned that my friend Gail and I, um, we were talking after the holidays on how there were so many things, you know, you don't think about it till now. Okay, we're under pressure. Oh, I could have stitched this gift for this one or that for that one and so on. And we were talking about that. And I said, you know, we should do like a monthly stitch. There goes grandfather clock. Well, guess what? I thought I turned it off, but I didn't. Anyway, who cares? So um, we decided we were going to do like once a month, we would set goals for ourselves and see what we can get done in the way of either a Christmas gift, um, Christmas decorations, like whatever it was. I personally have um, plan a plan to do eight Christmas stockings for the family. Because you know, after a while, I mean, goodness, they're still hanging my stocking up from when I was married back in 1976. It's ugly. <laughs> it's been through the ringer. But kids, they like they like to make sure everybody has to have a stocking. Um, and I also learned that along the along the way this past holiday, the kids love the stockings. Like that's all they talked about. They're like intrigued with it. Like what's going to be in it? Da da da. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't really, I didn't really plan to put a lot of emphasis on that. Anyway, so I want to make, um, and now the ice maker is filling with water. Sorry for all the noise. Um, I want to, you know, make new stockings, have them all look semi nice and be all pretty. Um, so that's on my list. But in the meantime, I wanted to make some of my ornaments for a new tree that I want to do. And so I'm using Buttermilk Basin um, Ornament Extravaganza 2 book. And so I decided to pick these little, my little ginger people. See how I love the buttons? Buttons, buttons, buttons. And the little house. But of course you can see they're giants, but the house is in the background, right? So anyway, there you have it. So I'm doing these little ginger guys. They're all done, stitched. I don't, I didn't put anything on the top. I'm not sure how I want to hang them. Uh, that could be added later. And so this is the last little guy here. I just have to do the um, blanket stitch around the black out, outside edge. But I'm calling it a win. And so that's my Christmas club. Um progress. You. Then, let me see, what was I going to talk to you about next? Okay. If you'll indulge me. I, in 2019, I was prepping for a project, which is on the WIPGO. You'll see it. I mentioned it in one of my earlier videos. I needed a lot of cave style fabric. And I need a lot of variety. So I didn't want yardage. I wanted fat quarters. Anyway, I'm like, oh, fat quarter shop. It just sticks in your mind. And now I'm looking for fat quarter bundles. So there you go. So I go online and I'm looking at the fat quarters. And I buy lots of bundles, um, lots of variety and sign up for the newsletter because, hey, you know, uh, and so I get a newsletter, I don't know when it was, maybe a month later. And there was this really cute little um, thing, I'm gonna call it a thing for a minute. And I'm like, oh, that's so adorable. That would look so cute in my sewing room. Oh, it's cross stitch. Well, that's okay. Click, add to cart. I love that add to cart, you know? And then you coordinate that with PayPal. It is like click, click, click. Done. You don't 
find your wallet. You don't have to pull the card out. Yeah, so shopping. Um, and so I became a cross-stitcher. And I say that with a bit of caution because I was faking it. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> I'm like, it's an X. How hard could it be? I hand stitch all the time. It'll fit right in my hand. The needle situation. It's going to be a piece of cake. Not so much. All right. So the project that sucked me in, shall we say, was this little, this little beauty from, let me pull this stuff out of the middle, from Lori Holt. Adorable. I love it. And you can see it will look great in a sewing room. Of course, I don't have a sewing room, but I have a dream of a sewing room. Uh, right now, my little granddaughter has my sewing room, but she's worth it. And I have a little stitchy area in her room where we both stitch. I stitch, she colors. It's, it's wonderful. But anyway, someday. And so I really love the saying. Um, and then the colors. That was just making me happy. Uh, so I ordered it. And then I later find out, like, oh, it's sold out in, like, hours. And I just happen to be a click. Anyway, um... I entered, entered the world of cross stitch. So, um, I start. I'm having a little struggles. Nice lady on Socation from New Jersey uh, was cross stitching at Socation. And I'm like, oh, could you help me? I'm having a hard time with some stuff, right? And so she looked. <laughs> I can still see her face. She looked at what I had, my progress, and she just like, oh, well, she did one of those. I'm like, oh, I'm in trouble. Well, you can cross stitch. And she was so tactful, heartwarming, encouraging, instructional without criticism. Oh my goodness. I don't know how she did it because now that I'm a couple years in, because this was 2019, now I'm a couple years in, I'm like, wow. I have since, she she tried to fix some of it for me, and I have since pitched it. Like sometimes you have to let it go. Make it like Elsa. Let it go and start over. And I did. And I started over and then I stopped before I really even got very far. And then for some reason, you know, you have to wait until you feel it. I don't know if you have that in your creative life. I can't do something if I don't feel it, you know. I mean, I can and I'll push through it. But it's much more fun when you enjoy what you're doing. Obviously, that's why we do it. And so... A couple of months ago, only recently, it just hit me. I'm going to pick that back up again. And so I'll show you. Oh, you already unzippered it. I'll show you what I have. And I have to say, I'm proud of me. I am because I have progressed. And that's what I have. More importantly, I get it. I get it. Like, I get the whole idea. Of cross stitching and because there's like even in quilting it's not that it's right or wrong but it looks better right there's no police school police although anyway so I think I think the X's are pretty darn nice and along the way along the journey in the past couple of years I've learned quite a few things from these lovely people called floss tubers. I'm so jealous. I wish there was quilt tubers or stitchy tubers, but they're floss tubers, meaning um, embroidery floss, cross stitch. They're my people now. And um, they keep me company, honestly. Uh, it's just a lot of quiet time when you're home alone and you're stitching. And so I turn on the old YouTube and the floss, floss tube and I learn some stuff. And so I have learned along the way, um, 
a lot of really good instructional videos I got from, well, first of all, Kimberly, of course, from Fat Quarter Shop. Kimberly Jolly does this thing called Stitchy Talk. Um, I don't know what she calls it now. I just can't remember, but um, every Wednesday, I'm on there. If not Wednesday morning, definitely later Wednesday, maybe Thursday. I sort of know it's there and I save it for when I just get to sit there with my tea and my stitching. And um, Jan Hicks uh, did a very good series of teaching people how to cross stitch. And then watching all the other ladies that I like to watch, um, they answer questions from their audience and the questions that I would ask. Like, where do you start your stitching? From the bottom or the top? From the left or the right? Do you start in the center? Etc. And so then the answers are answered to me, I feel, because, oh, I want to know that. Anyway, along the way, that, that's how it happened. That was my journey. Some of my very favorites, um, and I, I think how it worked out was because I bought the fat orders at Fat Order Shop, and then bought the first cross stitch design that Lori Holt designed for cross, with, with cross stitch being my bonnet. And then it was, um, it's so Emma is, uh, the publishing that's, they publish it through it's so Emma. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, she talks about what she's stitching. And then she mentions this other, um, pattern company she sells for and it's called the real housewives of cross stitch and i look at it, i'm like oh yeah because i'm a bright color person i like all that stuff and okay don't don't be offended civil war quilts are not for me i always say jokingly the war's over let's move on but i i respect it i would certainly respect the history but it's not my style, right? It's not my style of color. My, it's just not my thing. I appreciate it. I like seeing them, but that's, you know. And so when I see cross stitch through the lens that I see it through with Fat Quarter Shop, I see it through the colors I like. The styling is very similar. So um, Kimberly Stitch is a similar style that I like. And so that's sort of how I just landed there and kind of feel comfortable there. Um, and then she shows the Real Houses of Wives of Cross Stitch. And then of course I see they have a YouTube and I start watching them. And um, somehow or another, I stumble across um, Jan Hicks. Well, I stumbled across her along the way somewhere, I don't remember. Um, and then of course there's um, Quilt Roadies, Anna. Um, She's a hoot. She's a hoot to watch and listen to. <laughs> That's a term they use up here in the Northeast. A hoot. Anyway, she's cute. Um, but I just love the personalities. I love visiting with the ladies and I like the things that they um, teach me indirectly without even realizing it. And um, so, you know, after a little while and I'm watching these floss to people that I really enjoy and there's others, there's many others. I'll talk to them about them some other time. The one thing that I don't mind looking at and listening to, but I really have no interest in, just like the um, Civil War quilts, is samplers. I, it's not my style, and it's okay. Um, and so that's why I sort of lean towards uh, the stitchers who are not necessarily doing those kinds of things. Um, although a lot of times they're, they're two people doing these floss tubes, and so there's a really nice mix. You have some samplers, you have some, you know, either way, you're going to get some stitching joy out of it. And so there, my cross stitch journey began. And I struggled with a lot of it. I struggled with the floss and the knotting and the, uh, you know, but that's all about the journey. And so, no, my very first piece is not finished, but a lot of quilts go like that. So I'm not really shocked about the cross stitch. But I have finished some things and they're, they're basic, you know, simple. Um, and I pulled a couple out so I could show you. And um, through the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch 
a lot of their style, of course, has changed now. They used to stitch on black, and I thought, oh, yeah, I stitched on black. And then I, I'm like, oh, my goodness. I cannot see it. Like, I can't see the black. I put lights behind it, lights over it, magnifying, everything, all the things. Guess what? If you're not happy, don't do it. <laughs> so um, I switched the background fabrics. Oh, no big deal. But this is one of their designs. It's very cute. And I learned all about how you finish it and you put the magnets, yada, yada. Lots of good stuff there. So that's one. Uh, I joined one of their quarterlies stitching through Fat Quarter Shop, um, Stitch Quarterly. <laughs> and I did for one year. I said try for one year. And it's based on um, designs that are very, um, not simple, basic. There's not too too much difficulty. And so look at this cutie. This is Rudolph. It's cute. I did him. He looks good. And And this is towards the middle of my journey where I'm very good with the color and the stitching and getting the the um, top thread to all go the same way. Who knew there was all these rules? Or suggestions, but I call them rules because, hey, follow darn rules. Anyway, and this was a free design I got somewhere. Cute. I showed this on my last video. Um really pretty I love the colors and you know here's the funny thing just like in quilting there's mistakes in two of the three I showed you but I, oh three of the four I showed you but you can't tell where they are because you look at it and you're like yeah I know that stitch should have still been a little bit here whatever but it looks good and a lot of it for me was um being off a little like off one or two if you count it 300 times, how is it you're off? And you don't figure, find out that you're off until you're all done. I don't know. I mean, all done in that area. And now you got to count over. And you're like, why isn't this lining up? <laughs> because you didn't count right. That's why. But it's okay if you make it look, if you make it look nice and you're happy with it, keep going. Um, this one I did last summer. And what I did was um, I did all the outline on the letters so that I could just do stitching without looking at the chart uh, while I was at the lake with the kids. It's just cute. Home. I like it. That's another one from that quarter shop. Put the magnets on it so it can stick and hang up on the, the thing. And um, that one I showed you with the little bunny carrots and all that is a series from the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. If you're a cross stitch person, I'm not telling you anything new. And it's from their calendar crates series. And there was 12, one for each month. I have all of the months because I was on that auto ship situation. And um, I only did the two, two or three. It's okay. It's all right. I'll get to it. I did make this one, but I cannot find the sample quickly. It's in the, it's in the buckets. I did that one. Um, I did this very early on for my friend. I made her a little, um, little framed piece. Really cute. And um, I have lots more in progress because guess what? I found out, and this is funny. Cross stitchers pride themselves on having new starts. I think it's adorable. They brag about them. They love them. They like to have 15 of them all stacked in a bucket. They like to keep them in, I say they, but I guess I am one of them now, right? I'm in the club. Um, I guess what I'm saying is they're just more free. They're more free in their thinking. Now, yeah, there's monogamous stitchers, people who are like, no, I'm not done and I'm not starting anything new. We have quilters like that. I don't sit by them. It might be contagious. I want to do stuff. I want to do lots of stuff. I want to start lots of things. But anyway, um, what's my point? Oh, <laughs> so they start a lot of new things. And it's sort of like I have permission. And I kind of like that now that I'm in the club. Uh, so I have a whole bucket of stuff and I'd love to share them with you along the way. Um, I don't really want to call this a floss tube because I don't 
think I meet the, I don't want to say the standards because that sounds like, you know, some kind of elite club that nobody can join. And that's not the case. Um, I just don't know that I have that amount to share, um, that, that level of cross stitching to share. But this is a channel about my stitching and I stitch cross stitch. So I'm going to share those here. And I'll keep adding little bits of it as we go along with my monthly updates and I hope you enjoy them. Um, there is one other um, cross stitch I want to show you and I have to tell you a funny story about this. It is called a temperature chart, a temperature um, project from Kimberly at Back Order Shop. And so there's a lot out there with temperature quilts, temperature stitches, all kinds of things. Um, Sue Pelland of Sue Pelland Designs. Uh, she does a rotary cut raw edge applique um, line of designs and products, instructional videos. Um, she's like, you know, amazing. And she did one, a beautiful one with one of her, her very basic tool, leaves galore, a beautiful leaves. The idea of a temperature quilt chart, whatever you want to say, is that you track the weather in your area and each day you get your daily temperature. Now you can have your average, your high, your low, whatever you decide. And then you have a list of coordinating floss colors or fabrics that are going to represent that day's temperature. And then the design layout is the design. And 365 days later, you have all the colors. And um, it's just fun. It's entertaining. So I signed up to do, because I wanted to experience, you know, the whole color chart situation, whole temperature thing. Um, I didn't want to make a quilt. I, I really can't make any more. I have so many quilts. I need to start giving them away. I have so many I want to make. I, I just didn't want to start a big project of a quilt. And so I picked cross stitch. And just like quilting, when I try new things, I try to expand my skills. And I very first started stitching on Ada, which is, in my opinion, I guess the vibe I'm getting from the industry is the more inferior fabric to stitch on. However, I have stumbled across a few floss tubers who are like embracing the, um, the Ada cloth. I'm like, I love you. Uh, but you know, I like to challenge. So I'm going to start using, um, a fabric called even weave. And instead of crossing one hole over with your floss, you have to cross over two holes. I can't even count the ones. Now I'm going to count the twos. Okay. You can imagine where this is going, but I want to stick to it because I'm challenged by it. And that's, you know, that's a fun part. But anyway, um, I'm doing this. Um, I'll show you the cover. So temperature cross stitch through Fat Quarter Shop. All right. So the idea is, again, you've got a list of temperatures, uh, a place where you can capture your temperatures for the day. It coordinates with the colors of floss. Sorry, I'm turning my head, but so for example, see, they give you that temperature coordinates with the color. Then you follow the chart. And here I finished February so that I could show this on my video today. Now it's in a hoop and it's kind of, it's crooked, but it doesn't matter how it is in a hoop. Um, so this is January and February's temperatures. Now I just want to show you. See that yellow? February was 40, no, 53 degrees. Yes, 53 degrees. <laughs> Sticks out like that. Anyway, I thought it was just kind of cool. And so that is my progress. I find that if I just collect the temperatures for a month, I'm better off. And then just stitch it because you got to stop and start and just do, you know, and it, I'm just better off if I just sit and focus on it because I can do it in the one day of stitching and it's, it's just easier for me that way. But try to explain this to the men folk in my family. What are you stitching? Oh, it's a temperature um, project. What do you mean temperature? 
well, you look at the temperature for the day, coordinates with color flow, it's just such a thing. Da, 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 da. Well, that's stupid. Why would you do that? Well, you know, it's just a fun, random way to select your color, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. No, that's my son. <laughs> okay. Move along, buddy. <laughs> what do you think about it is kind of funny, but it's sort of just a fun, random, entertaining way of selecting the color. That's okay. So that's, that's what I have for you. And then the last thing that I want to show you is, um, like I said, the, the cross stitch people, um, they love to say, Oh, here's what I've been working on. Here's my new starts. I'm like, oh. and I, the other day I said, Oh, I, I really just want to start that one thing. Cause I think, I really think I can do it. And the reason why I, I felt challenged by it was I did not know that you can get charts that are in color and you can get charts that are not. And since I started with Kimberly and Fat Quarter Shop and their charts are in color, and then I went over to the Real Housewives and their cards, charts are in color, I didn't know that wasn't like a standard. And so then I bought these other really cute charts from um, hands, hands on Designs, Kathy Haberman. She's cute. She reminds me of my sister. That's why I like watching her. Anyway, uh, and, and she's very inspiring and fun. Anyway, if you ever, haven't ever watched one of her videos, it's very entertaining. Her husband's on her videos, and he's called Mr. HOD, Mr. Hands on Design. I think it's so cute. <laughs> Funny story, real quick. I used to work in the quilting industry, and we do quilt shows. And for some reason, if you see a woman in the booth and you see a man in the booth, they assumed you were married. And so my boss was assumed to be my husband. It was so funny because <laughs> two things could never be more separate, right? Anyway, it was just fun. Um, and so he's, he's, he's kind of fun. So I was very challenged by her chart because it's in black and white. And I can't see very well anyway. I mean, you know. And I just, for some reason, the other day felt like, you know what? I think, I think I got it. I, I think I can do that. Um, and so I decided to start this little baby right here. And just like quilting, when I see it in the colors I see it in, I usually, it's because I like the colors. So I don't usually change much of them. And so I, I did do it on a, a pale green Ada. I didn't do it on, you know, the other stuff. That's okay. Ooh, my needle is stuck. And I spent the weekend of stitching and a little bit of the first Monday, maybe. And I felt pretty good about how far I got. So I'll just show it to you. And so that's what they call a new start. But I, I really feel um, accomplished by it. But again, this whole this whole counting thing. I must count this thing like a hundred times. And why this part over here is not in the right place according to the number spaces and so on. I don't understand. I don't know where I went wrong, but guess what? I'm moving on. I don't care to find an error because I can't see it. And so what I did was I said, okay, let's get rid of those extra stitches here so that there's three on that end and three on that end. My point is you make it work. You make it work and you make sure that everything you're stitching and taking your time brings you joy. And this brought me a lot of joy and it brought me enough challenge and um, enough enthusiasm to get me through to this point. But I had to put it aside and update my temperature chart and now I have to do my whip go for March and moving on. And that's how it goes back in the little bag with the little zipper. Until next time. Well, that's, that's my stitching update for this month. I hope that you have a lot of fun stitching. You know, I used to have a really big giant quilting room and I used to have a big space for my long arm and it was a, a lot of heaven, a lot, a lot stitching heaven right and then the grandkids moved in and the room got smaller got more kids 
I got moved over to here, got more kids, blah, blah. And now I have a little corner to stitch in. But I have more joy than I could ever have with a big giant sewing room, with a big giant space for my long arm, and I've got the joy of my grandkids. And I still find a way to stitch. I do a lot more hand stitching now, and which is nice. It does slow me down anyway, because as I said, I have my quilts. I just sent my husband to work with a bag of quilts again, and I'm like, you know, be generous. Give them, see who wants, you know, among your friends. Um, it makes me happy. Um, I hope that you have things that make you happy in your stitching world. Uh, it looks like, you know, the world is starting getting to get back to all the shows, the quilt shows. Um, spring is when you see a lot of quilt shows start coming around. The field has been cleared somewhat. You know, some of the smaller shows have decided to retire. A lot of the shops have decided to retire. The world changes. With every incident that happens, the world changes. So more shops were forced into having an online store as well as their brick and mortar. And some made the choice to just stick with online and so on and so on. But you know what? No matter what, um, there's sm all small business owners, these shop owners, um, brick and mortar, online, Etsy, whatever it is, they're all a small business somewhere in somebody's town. Um, just, you know, support, support what you can. Support as many as you can and whatever you can do responsibly. Um, Sometimes I'm a little irresponsible, but we won't talk about that right now. Uh, as long as I keep finishing things, I figure I'm good. I'm good. I'm staying ahead of it. Um, I thank you so much uh, for coming back to visit with me. I'll be back again next month. Um, please take a visit over to my Facebook group, What's Under Your Needle. Uh, please join. A couple of questions and, you know, jump in there and show us what's under your needle, whether it be applique, knitting needle, crochet, whatever it is. Um, I like to post a couple times a week at least. Uh, I feel it's my connection to the outside world um, after I close my shop, just out there floating in the breeze, you know, without a lot of people to connect to. And it can be a lonely place sometimes uh, to be home alone a lot. Although Monday is my favorite day. I love the busyness of the family. I love the weekend, but boy, when everybody goes to work and school on Monday, oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a two cup of coffee morning. That's a, uh, I'm wearing my slippers all day morning. Uh, I love, I love a Monday. Unfortunately, this Monday we're supposed to get a nor'easter. But that's okay, because I'll be fresh off my soakation weekend, which starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. I can't wait. Check out Maria's website, pinwheels.com. Click the soakations tab, and you can see all the dates. Come and take a trip out to Sturbridge, Massachusetts. And uh, join us for some stitching. A very nicely priced retreat. I mean, $100 gets you into the sewing room. You can stay at the hotel or not. You get your own meals, whatever it is you want to do. Um, it's a, it's a fun time. Um, also you can visit, uh, Maria's website and see what she has to say about the Hexi Sal, Hexi, uh, Stitch Along. You can still join. I believe it's an ongoing thing. Like you can catch up. I'm not sure, but check it out. It's only the first month. Uh, we haven't even gotten the second shipment yet. Maybe she'll have them with her when she comes for, to do soccation. I don't know. That'd be nice but maybe not. <laughs> then I'll feel guilty. I go, oh, got to start another project. Um, my, um, my prayers and best wishes and hopes for quicker recovery go out to Debbie Brown. She's really struggling with her health. We so miss her, um, creativity. Uh, her color blocks program is still going. Um, we just need to wait till she gets better. And she'll be back out there with her uh, free quilt patterns and quilting instruction. And um, get better, girl. We'll miss you. Uh, I think that's it for me. Um, 
keep on stitching and uh, hey, leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on. Join the Facebook group, tell your friends, subscribe, all those things. Love you a bunch. Thanks for joining me.